Now in order to complete Report 7246, the meeting minutes, be sure that you are prepared by completing 72E in your textbook. You'll have to be doing some page flipping to complete these documents or you can have the checklist up as I'm demonstrating when I type the document. You can make room on your screen for both if at all possible. All right, now go to Report 7246 in the menu, Minutes of a Meeting. And start work. All right, we're going to set up our screen here, pulling up our checklist over on the right. Press Enter five times once again. One, two, three, four, five, and insert an open table two columns and let's count the rows one two three four five six the first step is going to be to select the table and remove the borders if you do not have grid lines showing in your document these blue dashed lines then move to the Layout ribbon and be sure that View Grid Lines is highlighted. If it's not, click it and these lines should be visible to you as you work. Next step, select the first row and merge the cells. At this point, you want bold, all caps, which means turn on your caps lock key and then increase your font size to 14. And in addition, you're going to center the next group of three lines in the title block. And you will type Advisory Committee. Remember at this point, reduce your font size to 12. Press Enter twice. We want a blank line between each row in this title block. Turn off Caps Lock. Press Enter twice and type the date. Then press Enter once. Press Tab to move to the first row. Now here, these headings are 12 point. The only thing that is larger than that is the title itself. But the headings are bold and all caps. If you forgot to set it, you can do it afterwards. Move to the next cell. Turn off Caps Lock. After you reach the end of the sentence with Chairperson, then press Enter once. Now here you will notice that Word will often indicate with a red squiggly line that a name is misspelled. You need to check these against the original. I can see that there is a typo here with Higgins, so I can fix that. But let's see if I misspelled Benevides. No, that is correct. So I can ignore that one as well as Quan, Q-U-A-N. Those are correct. At the end of this sentence, I press Enter once and then Tab to move to the next line where I'll turn on Caps Lock and Bold to type Approval of Minutes. Press Tab to move to the next cell and type. After the period, I press Enter one time. Press Tab to move to the next line. Press Enter after the end of each entry in the cells in column B. All right, after this sentence, the meeting was adjourned at 2.45 p.m. The next meeting is scheduled for July 10 in room 16. I'm going to move the screen up so you can see the next few steps where we have to pay attention to line spacing. After room 16 period, we press enter twice and type the closing. This creates one blank line between that sentence and the closing. Then just as in letters, we want three blank lines, so we press enter four times. One, two, three, four, and type Nancy Jacobs secretary. Do not insert any keystrokes after secretary. No spaces, no pressing enter, no tabs. 
At this point, we are to the step in the instructions where we need to manually adjust the width of column A to accommodate the longest heading as shown in the illustration on page 283. However, notice that approval of minutes is shown on two lines and that is the exception. It is to be on two lines and the sentence opposite in column B is also to be on two lines. So we're going to adjust this width until both are occurring. Now, let's see what happens here. All right, we have approval of minutes and this sentence is also on two lines, which creates the consistent spacing in the cells in each row. Now let me show you something that could happen. If you move your border over too far, then this sentence in column B goes on to one line and we have no blank line after approval of minutes. That's a little bit too far, so if that happens with you, move this border back to the right just even an eighth of an inch until that sentence is bumped onto two lines. This is correct and be sure that your left and right margins of the table are still, I should say the borders of the table, are still at the margins, the one inch margin on the left and on the right. These are not borders that you want to adjust. They should stay at the margin. This is not presented as a table. The table is moved, used merely as a framework, so you do not want to use autofit it should extend the entire width of the page. All right, when your document looks just like this, you can save it and submit it for scoring in GDP.